a six-party alliance appears poised to form Pakistan's next government. There's been a week full of political drama after a fractured mandate delivered by the country's voters. Led by the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, the PMLN, which won 75 seats, and the Pakistan People's Party, which secured 54 seats, the coalition will have more than 150 members in the national parliament. In order to form a government, any party or collection of parties will need to cross the required 134 seats for a simple majority in the National Assembly. However, Pakistan tehreek e insaf the PTI, or the party of former Prime Minister Imran Khan, described this new alliance as thieves who were stealing the people's mandate. They insisted that a government formed by a grouping of parties would lack any credibility. The PTI, which was forced to field independent candidates after losing its electoral symbol, the cricket bat, just days before the election, emerged as a clear winner. Candidates, independent candidates who were affiliated with the PTI or supported by the PTI, they won a total of 93 seats, almost 20 more than the PMLN. The success of the PTI may constitute as close to an upset, electorally speaking, in a country where the military is the ultimate arbiter. It reflected the deep, loyal support base of Imran Khan, something that he has cultivated since he was ousted by parliament back in 2022. He also seems to have a rather unique ability to try and outmaneuver the military generals and their playbook for sidelining politicians. In Punjab, which is the country's most populous province, which accounts for more than half of the seats in the parliament, many candidates in Nawaz Sharif's party, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, lost to those independents who were backed by Imran Khan's party, the PTI. Key PMLN leaders, including those in Sharif's inner circle, lost the races in their constituencies, which were once considered to be strongholds for the party. The PMLN were tagged as the Lions of Punjab, and that is where they suffered the maximum setbacks. With the National Assembly session expected to begin by the end of this month, critics of the PMLN-led alliance are raising questions about the sustainability of the incoming coalition government. They're even drawing parallels with the Pakistan Democratic Movement, or the PDM, which was also a coalition that ruled Pakistan for about 16 months from April 2022 till the declaration of elections earlier last year. The PDM was also led by the PMLN and the PPP. They had come to power after deposing the then Prime Minister Imran Khan through a vote of no confidence. Shahbaz Sharif, who was the Prime Minister during the PDM's tenure, has once again been nominated as the coalition's choice for Prime Minister. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, who's the chairperson of the PPP, the second largest party, and a former foreign minister, he has ruled himself out of the government unless he is made prime minister. So with the PPP not joining this new coalition government and only supporting it from the outside, that will mean this is going to be a shaky coalition. And that is one reason perhaps why former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif did not want to lead this government as prime minister. But human rights groups have expressed serious concerns about the nature of the result itself. They say there were signs of tampering by the military. They warned that it would raise questions about the legitimacy of the incoming government. In fact, this is what the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan put up on its ex-social media account. This lack of transparency is deeply concerning. We see no plausible reason to attribute the delay to any extraordinary circumstances which might justify it." Unquote. Thousands of PTI supporters took to the streets in big and small cities across the country. They ranted against the slow release of the results. They made it clear that they would not accept any possible manipulation of the vote. The election came after a military campaign to try and neutralize Imran Khan and his party. PTI leaders and their supporters were arrested in droves. The party was barred from using its iconic cricket bat symbol on ballot papers. And in a country where nearly half the electors are illiterate, the symbol was a crucial visual cue for voters. That got taken away. Imran Khan, a former cricketer turned 
populist politician was arrested in August of last year. He has been convicted in three separate cases already. Cumulatively, his sentences add up to more than 30 years in prison. Meaning, unless he's pardoned or unless there is a dramatic reset of ties between him and the military, he will continue to be in jail for the rest of his life. He has been barred from holding any public office for the next 10 years. Many supporters feel a deep allegiance to the populist leader that Imran Khan was. They believe he was wrongfully ousted by the military. But for other voters, it was because they were simply fed up with the military's constant meddling in politics and they cast their ballots for PTI candidates just to spite the generals. As one analyst put it, this is much more a public verdict against the military's interference in politics it is against party suppression. It is for democracy. So the voter was coming out either in anger or desperation or simply disillusion. A message that will be heard in the garrisons of Rawalpindi for a long time to come.